Willkommen bei einer neuen Ausgabe am Rande der Bande, dem Videoblog der Westdeutschen Zeitung zu den Krefeld Pinguinen. Heute sind wir zu Gast bei Central Hockey auf dem Gallingsfahrt, wo Achim mit seinem Team heute einiges an diesem Standort feiert. Zudem ist auch heute die Eröffnung der Eishockey Central Arena. Als Gast zu einer Autogrammstunde und Talk ist der Torwart der Krefeld Pinguinen, Jussi Rünes, dabei. Vielleicht kann Lukas ihn ja eine Antwort zu der nächsten Saison auslocken. So, herzlich willkommen bei Central Hockey Krefeld. Wir haben hier heute die Eröffnung und zwar feiern wir die Eröffnung der Central Arena Krefeld. Das ist, wie ihr seht, die ja, Trainingsschusshalle hier mitten im Laden drin auf der Kunsteisfläche. Und ich möchte zum ersten Central Arena Talk meinen ersten Gast begrüßen und zwar den Torhüter der Krefeld Pinguine, Jussi Rennes. Jussi, thank you for having you here and uh, yeah, how do you like our place here? Uh, it looks really nice. Yeah, I, what I've seen so far is uh, it's really really cool cool uh, hockey store. Also, ich muss ja wohl nicht übersetzen. Ich denke, hat jeder verstanden, dass wir ein cooler Hockeyladen sind, weiß ja eh jeder. Nein, aber Spaß beiseite. Wir wollen mit Jussi so ein bisschen sprechen heute, auch über Eishockey natürlich, aber auch fangen wir erstmal an über seine Kindheit und wie er früher in Finnland praktisch aufgewachsen ist. Jussi, a question to your childhood in hockey in Finland. Just explain us or tell us, uh, how did you start hockey? Uh, I think I was uh, five years old when I, my, my, My older brother, he, he played hockey and uh, we went to the practice and the first time I remember I started crying and I didn't want to go there and uh, so I, I just went back to my daddy and uh, we agreed that okay we try next year again. So uh, then I was six years old and then I was big enough and I went there and after that it's just like I just love it right away so it's so did you start in net right away or was it like more skating as a player first? I started as a player and uh, there was one game, they need a goalie, nobody wanted to go and I I think just just go go there and see how it feels and I really liked the uh, equipment, like all the pads and gloves and everything so uh, That's, I'm still in the same way. That's amazing. Also ihr habt es auch alle ein bisschen verstanden. Wie gesagt, der Jussi hat auch im Endeffekt ja, ja was heißt ungewollt, durch einen Zufall ist er ins Tor gekommen. War bei meinem Vater damals übrigens auch so. Äh, mein Onkel, sein Bruder hat damals auch irgendwie die Ausrüstung äh, gehabt und äh, der kam zu spät und mein Vater war halt früher da. Ja gut, dann ging er ins Tor. Solche Zufälle passieren und man sieht ja, was daraus wird. Ähm, dann hat er ja irgendwann als Profi auch begonnen und zwar er ist geboren in Pori und da gibt es nämlich Asset Pori, die SM Liga Mannschaft, wo er nämlich im Junior Team gespielt hat. Und um, er kann mal dazu was sagen. You see, you played for the Asset Pori Junior Team. Just tell us your start in your first hockey team later, and you end up then in the Finnish third division after, and then your way as a pro started. And you signed with Asset uh, 2009, is that right? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, that's my hometown, Pori. So uh, I pretty much uh, play whole, whole junior teams through the junior uh, program there, and uh, When I was uh, my last year in uh, last year in juniors, they told me that yeah maybe I had I get 15 centimeters in one year, so I get like really tall but really like uh, clumsy. So they told me that uh, I'm not good enough, so I have to went to play in a kind of like beer league, dirt league team. Is it that bad or? Yeah, it was it, it wasn't really good, but I I enjoyed it. Like, it was like they let me play and. Uh, in that time I was actually in army, so uh, it was close, so I get like some uh, vacations from army, so it was good for me. And it was your hometown too, so you could stay at home, right? No, it was, but it was like... In between, when you went on vacation, right? Yeah, it, no, it was like, the army is like 30, 40 minutes away from my hometown, but anyway, I get some vacations, so that's why I keep playing hockey and... Uh, Yeah, they called me back to the, my my junior team, and uh, we win silver in that that year. And then I signed two year deal with uh, Asset, and and yeah, that's pretty much. That yeah. was that was pretty impressive, actually. I was looking in internet a little bit, and I saw that you had a 0.927 save percentage in that first year there, and you actually went after that to one of the number one goalies of the league, pretty close. Um, after that, you had a big chance to go to the NHL. 
Brian Burke, I think he signed you or saw you, and then you went to Toronto and you, you had a two-year entry-level uh, contract. Just tell us about those first steps in North America. How it, uh, was it tough for you to go from home, from Finland, just to North America? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it was a little bit... Um, yeah, it, it was like, it was fun. But it was a hard time for me, like everything happened so fast, you know, like two years ago I was playing in the Beer League and suddenly I playing in my hometown team and I had a chance to sign an NHL contract. So, uh, and back that time I, my English wasn't good enough, you know, I, I couldn't speak with the boys in the locker room, it was like different world, but it's, I think it's, uh, it was huge uh, adventure for me to go in a way different world. And you grow up, I mean, for yourself, yeah, right? Is yeah. that you're, you're the man right now, you're alone, and you're kind of like getting a man, right? Is that, is that right, that you, like in hockey even, now you see there's a whole different, uh, yeah, practice on the ice, games on the ice, whole different world, what they want from you. That's a tough, tough uh, step for you, for sure, too, huh? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, like, uh, I wasn't, that time, when I was looking back now, I, I wasn't ready for that, like, you know, mentally, like how to prepare myself, how to eat, how to sleep, everything like to be like professional athlete. As I told you a couple of years ago, I was playing in the beer league, so it was like huge step. So, uh, but yeah, step by step, I have growing in that role more and yeah, it's, if I would have all the information what I have now, I think I would more had more success in uh, that time in North America, but but yeah, anyway, it's, it was, I enjoyed that time, I learned the language, English, and... Uh, it's important in hockey today, right? Because oh yeah. I, I think that when you, when you look at your uh, 2013 year, where you went back to Kerpet Olu, again, the numbers, 1.51 goals against percentage, oh, sorry, percentage, goals against average, and uh, 0 0.939... It's actually on Elite Prospects Open, right? <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty good, it's pretty good numbers for a goaltender. And actually then, like I said, you, you've been growing for yourself. You learned maybe a lot for your professional career. And how was it to go back? And did you want it really, well, everybody wants to go back, but did you feel you have a chance to go back to North America at that time? Because you had a great year after, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, I failed it that I, that I can't play there, so uh, it's, uh, it's all about having opportunity and uh, having a chance to do it. So, uh, yeah, that, that year in Oulu was great. I, uh, they let me play a lot. We had a really good team and uh, I learned so much. We had like great uh, leading players in, uh, in Oulu and uh, I learned a lot how to be that professional what I am today and uh, what I want to be. And, uh, that's that was one of the best decisions in my career to go into Olo, actually. Ich hoffe, jeder hat soweit alles verstanden, aber man kann sich ja bei YouTube auch schön die Untertitel anmachen, wer es also nicht ganz verstanden hat. Aber wir können noch mal so ein bisschen erklären, also er sagt selber, durch diesen Schritt nach Nordamerika ist er sozusagen auch noch mal ein bisschen an sich gewachsen, hat also da auch Sachen kennengelernt, die ihn heute auch geprägt haben, wenn er Profi ist und alles im Endeffekt musste er noch dazu lernen, weil er sagt selber, ich habe davor zwei Jahre lang in der Bierliga gespielt und musste dann auf einmal dann Richtung NHL, es war schon eine Riesenerfahrung, man ist da alleine auf weiter Flur, man kann die Sprache nicht, aber er sagt auch, dass in Finnland, wo er dann gespielt hat, auch noch mal, das hat ihn auch nochmal sehr geprägt, weil da wusste er auf einmal, wie man sich dann wieder als professioneller Athlet eben verhalten muss. Hat ja mit Schlafen zu tun und mit Essen, mit allem drum und dran. Sowas muss man ja erst aufschnappen. Nun, äh, jetzt gehen wir mal dazu, zu der Spielvorbereitung, ob er vielleicht auch mal so ein bisschen, ja, so Eigenarten hat. Jeder Torwart hat ja so seine bestimmte Sache. What about game preparation? I mean, every goalie is a little crazy or whatever. So do you think you have something you say where you're pretty crazy in or you have a special game prep? Or I know goalies, you couldn't talk to them for two days before. And I know goalies like Tyler Beskorovani, he was joking even before the puck was dropping. Like this is, goalies are different. What about you? Uh, when I was younger, I was really, uh, I didn't speak that much. I was really trying to focus and, but I, I end up to situation that I take it too serious. You know, it was really hard over and over again. I get so tired about it. So uh, I think now it's more like I just, because I know I'm in good shape. I, I know I'm a good goalie. I, I trust myself. I can, uh, I can just go to the rink and enjoy, you know, 
I'm more I, like now. Right now, I'm really relaxed when I come to the rink. I can speak and tell jokes and uh, enjoy at the moment. So this is this is something. Just real quick, I had a goalie, Dania Junusov. He played in Cologne, and I played with him in Wolfsburg. And one day, I woke up in a bus, and I look him. I look at him. He's like taping his sticks. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? We're not even there. And why are you you're taping your sticks in the bus? And he's like, well, um, I'm doing so much before the games. I have no time. I have so much to do before. And I looked at him like he was writing stuff down and everything. And I had just said that Daniel Junusov, with whom I played in Wolfsburg, and he was also in Köln zuletzt, uh, hat aber leider auch der hat damals, bin ich in the bus and he had also stopped, and then I was aufgewacht im Bus und auf einmal hat er seine Schläger neben mir getaped. Wo ich sagte, was machst du denn da? Ne? Wir sind noch nicht mal da. Und vor allem, warum tapest du Schläger im Bus? Der hatte so viel Sachen zu tun, so viel, so viel Eigenarten vor dem Spiel, ja, so viel Routinen, dass er sagte, ich habe sonst keine Zeit dazu. Ne? Uh, did, did you play with somebody else who, who had that, or is there somebody in Krefeld who is not maybe taping? His sticks but who has a, who is so superstitious and had to do so much stuff before the game is there anybody in the team yeah i mean uh my my former teammates teammate in uh, back in the days before he left from his home he had to measure that all the uh, what is this uh the walls the ceiling no or? no no what is the uh, how you call this uh paint oh yeah the paint yeah okay the, the paint like exactly <laughs> So Before the, he, you mean the color on the on the on the wall then on the on yeah the he have to like measure like this yeah. let's say this cross pitting yeah it have to that the measure that it is like exactly ah also I uh, had ein ein team mitspieler der sowas haus verlassen hat der dann messen musste für sich selber ob alles auch gerade gerade ist wenn es irgendwo hängt yeah that's maybe the craziest thing what I've heard. Ja, es gibt schon so einige verrückte Sachen. Gehen wir mal ein Schrittchen weiter. Um, uh, family. Your family is in Finland and you get to see them now in a break. And just tell everybody for a dad, you're not even just a hockey player, you're a, you're a dad. And um, you, your wife is missing you too. How tough is it here to be alone all year? And nochmal zu der Familie, weil sie lebt ja nicht mit ihm hier in Krefeld. Er ist ja auch Familienpapa. Wie schwer ist das für ihn, dass er die Familie nicht sieht? Ja, yeah, it's... Uh it is hard. Like uh, they have been here a couple times this year. It's it's great. But uh, yeah, my my wife is uh, first. She she went to school and now she's working. So they haven't had a chance to be here. Like they have been. Yeah, as I told you, three times only. But uh, and I'm more like I feel that I'm in this age. I'm more like dad than hockey player. So it's. Uh, different feeling than having no kids right? yeah yeah for sure for sure it's like when I was younger I felt like if I had a good game I'm a good people you know and if I had a bad game I'm uh, bad people but now I understand it's like uh, how I doing in hockey it doesn't like affect the goalie yeah. uh, the, the, the family life. yeah exactly I'm like I'm a still still the same person you know and that's a really important thing to learn you know in this in this sport in this business Er sagt also gerade auch, er, früher, wo er jung war und noch gar keine Kinder hatte, was auch nochmal so ein anderes Gefühl, wenn man ein Sportler ist. Und man erkennt dann oder man sieht, wenn er ein gutes Spiel hatte, dann hat er sich direkt gut gefühlt beim schlechten Spiel, direkt schlecht gefühlt, auch im Privaten, so übersetzt. Und dann meinte er ja, als er jetzt die Kinder hat, hat und festgestellt hat, dass im Endeffekt, ob er ein gutes Spiel hat oder ein schlechtes Spiel hat, man macht es ja nicht mit Absicht, wenn man mal ein schlechtes Spiel hat, ist es trotzdem nochmal ein anderer Abschnitt zu Hause und man ist dann immer noch der gleiche Familienvater, die gleiche Person. Das, das merkt irgendwann jeder. Profisportler, wenn er dann eben Familie hat, was eben wirklich im Leben zählt, Gesundheit und Familie und nicht Geld und, und Reichtum oder wie auch immer. Das merken die vernünftigen Spieler ganz schnell. Um, I just wanna don't wanna talk to you for one hour, but uh, the last question is or last two questions in Krefeld for you right now. I think that well. I know how it is to play here. It's uh, it's kind of a special feeling. It's not like every city. Because well, unfortunately, I saw a little more cities in this league, but I gotta say that this place is a little bit special. Just tell me, what do you like uh, think about playing here? What is? Can you explain the, the being a Krefeld uh, hockey player feeling for us? I mean, it's um, it's a great feeling. Like I really think we had a great fans. We uh, it's a uh, it's a great building to play, especially when we uh, we are fighting and we are doing good. It's it's unbelievable, unbelievable. It's but it's more like I what I really enjoy here. It's just like the people appreciate that if you just put your heart in the game and just give everything what you got. Even sometimes you lose, but they appreciate that still that you just give uh, that effort. 
and uh, and when we win, it's it's amazing. It's uh, it's it's a great great. Uh, it's a special feeling, and I really, I really appreciate this town. This is great, hug it, hug it down, and you can see that the people care. So it's, it's a great feeling. Also, you have also all a bit understood that man here, sagt er, a super Gefühl hier in Krefeld zu spielen und auch, äh, ja, sagt er, allein wenn man ein Spiel verliert, klar, sagt er, aber da stehen ja auch hinter einem die Fans, wenn man ein Spiel gewinnt, sowieso ein tolles Gefühl, tolle Fans, und ihnen gefällt es ja einfach auch super in Krefeld. Muss man auch nicht großartig erklären. Ich kenne das Gefühl auch. Also das ist schon eine spezielle Eishockeystadt, die man hier eben hat. Und uh, now the last and final question, what everybody wants to know is, uh, erstmal auf Deutsch, uh, jeder will natürlich wissen, ich wurde auf dem Vorfeld schon gefragt, wie sieht es denn nur aus mit Jussi Rines in Zukunft? Und es hat natürlich im Moment auch viel, viel Neben- äh, ja, oder, oder Seitwind gegeben, dass man nicht großartig über die Zukunft sprechen konnte, aber jetzt kann man es vielleicht wieder etwas. Und ähm, wie sieht es im Moment da aus? Ist schon was bekannt oder naja, lässt er vielleicht die Katze noch nicht aus dem Sack oder ist vielleicht doch noch nichts passiert? What about the future in Krefeld? Is there anything that you can announce or is there anything that you can say to it? People want to know and would, would really like to keep you here. Yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoyed it, my time here for sure. It's uh, future, I don't know yet what is, what is going to be, but uh, for sure if they, uh, right now when they get this ownership thing, Done. It's uh, it's a good good for uh, in general. It's good for the good for the club. But uh, yeah, it's a Krefeld is definitely one of the good option for me when I'm looking forward to continue my career. I really really enjoy my time here. So, but yeah, um, we'll see what's what's going to happen. Also ihr habt es auch alle gehört, natürlich kann man das jetzt noch nicht sagen. Schade, aber gut. Aber er sagt auch, er würde gerne theoretisch dann auch bleiben. Ihm gefällt das hier sehr und wir müssen auch dem Pinguin so ein bisschen Zeit geben, nach dem Ganzen, was jetzt war, sich so ein bisschen zu sortieren. Und jetzt plant man natürlich auch für die Zukunft. Aber man kann natürlich nicht äh, von heute auf morgen direkt einen äh, neuen Kader präsentieren. Aber wir würden News hier auf jeden Fall gerne behalten.